What's good guys? Welcome back to Missing Person Case Monday. Today we are talking about 23 year old Phoenix Coatsland. Phoenix is from the Spanish Lake, Missouri area just north of St. Louis. Phoenix went missing on December 18th of 2011. She vanished after shortly leaving her home and just three hours from leaving her home, her vehicle appears to be abandoned. Phoenix is the only child, which again, she grew up in the Spanish Lake, Missouri area. The last day that her parents seen her was on Sunday, December 18th of 2011. Her parents describe her as very inquisitive, quiet, and and that was mostly because she was homeschooled. But she did a lot of great things too. She played the violin, the piano, and she was a fan of and she was a fencing champion. Her mother describes her as very religious and on that day, which was Sunday, the day she vanished, they actually went to church before she ended up leaving the home. Her father states the last time he seen Phoenix was 3 p.m. that Sunday and she was seen and he seen her pulling out of the driveway and she never returned. He thought maybe she was going to the convenience store around the corner or to a friend's house, but he never could have imagined that she would just vanish and never return back to them. Around midnight, Phoenix's mother just felt something in her spirit was off because this was very unlike Phoenix to stay out all night and not notify them of her whereabouts. The next day, they began to call around to family and friends, local hospitals, and just trying to figure out where Phoenix may have went because maybe she went to a friend's house or maybe she just needed some time. They really didn't know because it was very unlike Phoenix to just go missing. But what's ironic is her vehicle was found just three hours you know, after Phoenix went missing, but the, her family did not know that the car had been found until about two weeks later. So that's just like really bizarre but that no one reported the car because the car her 1996 chevy blazer was found shortly three hours after she went missing because it was found around 527 is what they listed in the article and they posted this on like a the vanished podcast as well but that's not even what's crazy the keys were still the ignition her glasses were there and her shoes were also in the vehicle so it was that was it was it makes you think did someone like pop up on her abruptly and it was stated that it was in the it stated that the car was found in a crime ridden area in the east side of St. Louis. But again, the parents didn't find out about this until two weeks later of Phoenix being missing. And what's even stranger is the police didn't notify them that they had found the vehicle. They end up family ended up finding this vehicle themselves. And Phoenix parents and family were very frustrated because they felt like if the roles were reversed, meaning if Phoenix was a young white woman, the the speed and the the fast pace of her being missing and vanishing would have went a different route. And they also have expressed time after time in many articles and even on the Oxygen special that Phoenix did not get the proper media attention and they have expressed that if maybe her case would have gotten more attention, they probably wouldn't have been able to pinpoint some things because you think about it. Anything could have happened to that vehicle after maybe someone found it, you know, those three hours that she went missing and, you know, anything, the evidence could have been tampered. You just never know because two weeks from the time she went missing, I'm pretty sure someone had seen that vehicle and was probably driving it or whatever. You know, it's like, you know, it's just so many key players and it's just like we have to be a little bit more vigilant. If you see a running car, call the police, you know, it's just. We as a society have to do better on all ends of being vigilant and if we see something, say something. And although the car was found across state line, you would think maybe at least someone would try to like 
find out who this car is because it doesn't have, you know, the St. Louis tags or, you know, it's just like a lot of key things that you, you think about in that process. But I can understand why some probably wouldn't report it missing. But the police officer who was working the case stated that um, there was a delay in everything because there was a delay in when the vehicle was found and when Phoenix was actually, I guess, reported missing because the vehicle the vehicle was towed prior before Phoenix going missing. So, of course, in the system, it wouldn't have been flagged. But, again, it just leads me back to, you know, why didn't someone say anything if they seen a vehicle with keys in it just running? You know, it's just like, I guess some people don't think about those things. But and her mom stated that if she was Natalie Holloway, she, you know, she probably would have gotten more, more attention. And again, we just have to do better as a society. And we have to continue to spread the word. But Phoenix social media accounts, bank accounts, anything pertaining to her, as far as her phone, everything seized the day she went missing. There was no other reports of her following that day. But, but. People who have been taking, oh, sorry y'all. People who have been taking a take on this case and having their hands in it have stated that Phoenix was having kind of like a secret life because her parents were very conservative. She had a secret boyfriend and like one of the investigators on the case, he had basically stated that there was a lot that her parents didn't really know about her and probably even her friends. Cause I'm pretty sure you don't tell everybody everything about you. There are certain aspects in your life that you keep a secret because you don't want to feel judged. You don't want to feel mistreated. And as a 23 year old, I can definitely understand why she probably hid some things from her family, especially if they were truly conservative. Trust me, you will keep some things from them. After her disappearance, her family learned when she was 18 years old that she was actually living with a man when she was going to the university. Although she had told her parents that her roommate was a female, but that was actually a lie. She had moved in, she had moved back in with her parents just six months prior to her disappearance. But however, in this investigation, they have found out that Phoenix was actually dating multiple guys at the same time and that her parents really did not know anything that was really going on in her social life. Her cell phone records did show that she was communicating with a guy who was claimed to be her boyfriend. She was talking to him kind of very richly, especially on that day that she went missing. So the day before she went missing on December 17th of 2011, the guy called her about 10 times. The last call was about 116 minutes. Oh my, I wonder what, and it makes you wonder what the conversation was about. So on the day she actually went missing, there was a six minute phone call linked to that number who was claimed to be the boyfriend. And then there was another phone call to another number. Nick's mother has said in the past that she didn't believe that the boyfriend had anything to do with her disappearance but maybe he introduced her to a troubling crowd or the wrong people. Her parents believe that she was still taking classes at the university, but in fact, Phoenix had actually dropped out of college. She stopped going to school. Investigators have stated that the six months leading up to her disappearance was kind of like an unraveling of her life. So many things were happening at once in that six month time frame. And this is another thing with crime stories and missing person cases when you are so desperate to find your loved one people will play on that so the family actually fell victim to a lot of their life savings because they had a young they had someone give a tip in which they hired a private investigator who tried to follow up with the tip but end up finding out that this man had lied about the tip the entire time. So they have wasted money and resources that could have went somewhere else in their investigation. As a result of that, they were forced to move out of their home, which is so sad and, it's, and it sucks so bad because, you know, some people really don't know how to go through with these 
with these cases because you get so fixated on I need to find my baby and people play on it so heavily and it's like I wish someone would have kind of stepped in in that moment. Her story did go on oxygen and the family was hoping that this would create more leads and tips because they have exhausted every lead and tip that they could possibly think of, police can possibly think of. And that's what truly sucks when you, someone goes missing and you're trying to follow in those leads and it, it just, just pulls at your heart. The private investigator for the family did find two birth certificates that were out there with the name Phoenix Colton and then Phoenix Reeves, which is Phoenix mother's maiden name. So this led a tip for the police. Look into this. And what they found is they found four different individuals living in the United States with that name. They were able to eliminate three, but the fourth one was very questionable because it had no social security number to it, no date of birth, or no no family members associated, but it was listed as in Alaska. And the address was associated from January 2012 to about June of that same year. No evidence showed that it was actually Phoenix. When they showed the photo, you know, asking the neighbors, the neighbors said they did not recognize the woman. But then in 2014, one of Phoenix's friends states that she believes she's seen Phoenix on an airplane she was on her way to Las Vegas she says that the girl who she thinks was Phoenix was with another group of women and she was already seated so when she seen her she said she yelled out the name Phoenix she said when she said the name Phoenix the girl turned around and said oh do I look like someone the friend stated yes you do you look like my friend her name is Phoenix but the friend states that the girl kept walking and did not really engage in any other conversation with her. Friend said she was very confident that was her. Southwest Airlines was able to report it to the police, but when the police, you know, got there or wherever she landed, they could not find Phoenix. And it was also stated that there was two men traveling with this group of women. So when Oxygen did their special, there were a lot of different theories, one of which she was entered into human traffic. St. Louis is about the top 20th place for human trafficking to really happen, especially with the interstates highways, especially with the interstates, different highways, and a lot of people coming in and out of St. Louis. The second theory is she was met with foul play, and they believe this could be in proposition because there was no activity with her social media accounts, her bank accounts, her cell phones, and were, they were more than likely pretty sure that, you know, she would try to, you know, use her phone. And then the third theory is she just ran away. She didn't want to be bothered. Now, there isn't really any information to confirm her just running away. Her family does not believe that she would just run away. She would not run away and not, you know, tell them or seek some type of assistance. But then again, you know... She was 23 and she hit some things as well. Not saying that she would just run away, but you never really know. And there's, a, you know, it's just, you just really never know. And there has been, you know, different reportings of seeing Phoenix, but none of them have officially been confirmed to actually identify her. And if she is in human trafficking, that kind of would make a little more sense because why would her car just be left somewhere running you know her glasses were there you know a pair of sh her pair of shoes it it kind of just doesn't make some sense it you know so it makes you wonder what what happened to her in that three hour time frame or the moment she left her home you know were there any sightings of her or video recordings of her going somewhere you know was her phone tested you know from like pinpointed to see where in fact she may have been or who did she call you know in that one minute phone call before she got off the phone with her boyfriend you know there's a lot of areas that are gray that we we probably won't know but i do send love and light to her family and hope that they do get the answers because they have suffered a lot in this journey to lose their home to be but i'm sending love and light to the family and i pray that 
whatever the outcome is, they find the answers to it because every family deserves to know what has happened to their loved one, especially their child, <laughs> especially their child. So guys, until the next Missing Person Case Monday, I will see you and I hope you all have a blessed week. Bye-bye.